Hi everyone and thank you again for keeping me company on another episode of Gaffer Inc. Gear. In today's episode we're going to take a look at some of the new Nanlite Pavo Slim variants. In a previous episode I reviewed the Nanlite Pavo Slim 60C. This is the newer variant which is the Pavo Slim 60CL. Now the 60CL and the 60C are both 60 watt. They both use the same controllers and the same headleads. So the difference is the 60C is a one by one and the 60CL is a half foot by two foot unit. Now just like with the 60C, the 60CL has the same 60 degree native beam angle LEDs which gives it a lot of firepower. It also has the same beautiful pop out softbox design and it also has built in CRMX. Now over here we have the Nanlite Pavo Slim 240C. This unit is a little bit different. It doesn't have the pop out box design. It does fold in half for storage and the soft box you have to Velcro on and Velcro on the diffusion in the front. Now both lights have a CCT range from 2700 up to 7500 Kelvin and they are full RGB. Now the lights we're looking at today have the same light engines as the Pavo Slim 60 and the Pavo Slim 120, which I reviewed in a previous episode. So if you're after information such as color render, spectrum distribution, or DMX testing, refer to that episode. Okay, so let's start off with the usual disclaimers. I'm not getting paid any money for this episode, but Nanlite did send me these two lights for free, and I do get to keep them or sell them at the end of the episode. So technically that is a paid endorsement, which is why you get that little warning pop up at the start of the episode. All right, let's have a look at the Pavo Slim 60 CL and we'll get straight into the pros and cons. Now I don't have a lot of cons for these units, but a possible con for some of you might be the fact that the DMX is a micro jack. It doesn't have a five pin XLR in and output. So that means you have to buy the optional extra adapter cable, but I think the majority of people will be running these off the built-in CRMX. Now the next possible negative is the light is sold with a short two and a half meter long head lead. Now you can buy as an optional extra a seven and a half meter head lead and the head leads do interconnect. So you could extend multiple head leads together. Now that brings me to a point, I don't know what the maximum amount of head lead is on these units. I can't find any information in regards to that. I've reached out to Nanlite about this, so when I know, I'll let you know. Now let's have a look at something that I think is neither a pro or a con, and that is the control grid that is supplied with the light. Now, it's not bad, okay, but it's also not awesome. And a lot of the things with this light I think are really, really superb. So having a control grid which is just good is a little bit of a negative for me. Now, I would have liked it to have been a little bit tighter, but in all honesty, I'm not gonna go out and buy a third party unit because it does do a good enough job. I just wish it did a slightly better job. Let's start going through the pros now. And the big pro for me is how fast this unit is to set up. So it's got a soft box, which is spring loaded and you can have it permanently mounted to the light and store it with the soft box attached. So when you put it on the stand, you just grab these two Velcro tabs and the soft box pops out like that. Now, what also makes this fast, particularly if you're gonna be running it off batteries is the power supply, the controller and all of the battery mounts are built in. So if you're running this, for example, off V-mount batteries, you can just mount it onto your light stand, slap your V-mount battery on, plug in the light, and you're off and going. Also built-in CRMX really does add to the speed of the setup. Now where these lights are clearly going to hero is rigging into a small space, but not just because of their shape, but also because of their rigging options. So they're sold with a ball plate, and they're sold with a pin plate. But in addition to the two plates, you've also got two spots at which you can mount the plates. You can center mount, or you can mount offset onto the one end. In addition to that, you've also got four quarter 20s. As you can see, that gives you plenty of rigging options. So for example, let's say we wanted to suspend this above the set, we could get quarter 20 eye bolts and just screw those into the quarter 20 threads. 
Now, another thing that I like about these quarter 20 threads is they go all the way through the unit. So let's say, for example, you're stuck in a situation where you can't get around to the back of the light and you need to rig it. Assuming you're not using the pop-on softbox, you can use the quarter 20 mounts that are on the front. Another pro for me is where the cable connects to the light. It is not on the back, so that enables the unit to be very, very thin. So for example, you could put four magnets onto your quarter 20s here and put this straight onto a wall and the cable is not in the way. Now where these lights are clearly going to hero is if you've got a small amount of space above your shot that you want to get a light into. So before having these, I was using Titan tubes. So let's do a comparison now in brightness, this versus a full length Titan tube. The Pavo Slim 60CL with its full diffusion comes in at only 40% brighter than a Titan tube. With its grid cloth diffusion, it comes in at 208% brighter than a Titan tube. And with no diffusion, it comes in at 710% brighter. Now let's compare it to something that's more of a similar form factor, an Amaran F21. Bear in mind the Amaran F21 is double the size of this unit. Compared to the F21, the 60CL is 73% brighter with no diffusion. Now bear in mind this is a bit of an unrealistic comparison because the 60CL has spot LEDs and the F21 has flood LEDs. With the grid cloth diffusion, the Amaran F21 is only 4% brighter, so pretty much they're identical. And with the full diffusion, the F21 is 34% brighter. Okay, so let's go through cost and what you get. So these are just some prices I found online this morning. So it looks to be selling for a pretty consistent 600 US dollars. In Australian dollars, there is a bit of variation. So the cheapest price I found is 1,050, and the most expensive price I found is $1,110. So let's split that somewhere in the middle to give you an average. Okay, so it comes in a bag and it's quite a, a well-constructed bag and it's got some you know, serious padding on it. Uh, my only criticism of the bag uh, for Nanlite is if you guys made it this much taller, about an inch taller, you'd be easily able to fit two Pavo Slim 60 CL kits into the one case. So you can fit two in here, it's, you've got to do a bit of cutting, remove a bit of padding, um, and it is a bit of a tight fit. You've got to really push down on the zips. All right, so the light is stored in the lid, and that comes with the softbox on. Now, the softbox, the softbox does Velcro remove if you want to take that off. Okay, let's continue through the kit. On top here, we've got our control grid, our lighting control grid. You've got the full diffusion attached to the softbox here. And you've also got a grid cloth diffusion, which I'm guessing is a half grid cloth. You've also got a clamp here to mount your controller to your light stand. Now the controller has the power supply built in, so you just need to plug your mains in and you're off and running. Now a V-mount battery plate is built onto the controller and on the opposite side, you've got plates for your MPF batteries. You get your instruction manuals, you get your regional power cable, which has a Nutrix connector at one end. And this unfortunately is PVC cable. I really hate these power cables. You get a short head lead, which is only two and a half meters long, but you can buy up to a seven and a half meter head lead as an optional extra. I do like having the option because if you're using a light like this on a light stand, some other manufacturers only give you a long head lead and you've got to try and manage the head lead. So I really do appreciate having a short as an option as well. You also get your two mounts. You've got your baby pin mount and you've got a baby pin receiver with a ball mount configuration as well. And you also get a shoulder strap for the bag. So you've got a few options for shaping your beam here. You've got your half grid cloth, you've got your dense diffusion, you've got your native 60 degree beam angle, and you can use the diffusion with the lighting control grid. So let's take a look at how the options change the beam angles. This is with the full diffusion. This is with a grid cloth diffusion, no diffusion at all. This is full diffusion plus the control grid and the grid cloth diffusion plus the control grid. Now let's have a look at how the 60CL performs with no diffusion attached and just relying on its native 60 degree beam LED emitters. Now I'm just using a light stand here so that you can gauge the multiple shadows we get off all of the individual LEDs. As you can see by the brightness readings, we're getting a fair bit of firepower for just a 60 watt unit. Because this is a linear light source, I'm going to change the orientation of the light as I'm testing, as this will affect the shadows.
the results seem to be the same regardless of the CCT that's dialed in. Now let's take a look at the colors. and take a look at the colors with a change of orientation. With my shadows here, I'm standing one meter away from the wall with the light one meter behind me. And you can definitely see some shadow echo. However, this shadow echo won't come into play if you're using this light to illuminate a large area. All of those individual light sources tend to merge into one. Now let's take a look at the light with the grid cloth diffuser. And this has done a good job of merging all of the LEDs together to get rid of our multiple shadows. It has also given us a wider beam angle with a more pleasant drop off, but it has come at a brightness cost. We are now down to around 38% of the original output. Now the results seem to be the same regardless of CCT or the color dialed in. As you can see here, the multiple shadowing has gone. If you're lighting up a larger area than my workshop, this does give you a nice compromise between brightness and beam angle. Now let's take a look with the full diffusion attached. And this definitely gives us a very wide and even spread of light. The results are the same regardless of CCT or color dialed in. And the shadows are what I would expect from a light source of about this size. Now it's hard to get an idea of the beam angle, from inside my workshop. So let's take it the other side of the door and have a look. Okay, let's take a look now at the Pavo Slim 240C. And what we're gonna start off with is price and what you get for your money. So I've just had a look online and it seems to be selling at a pretty consistent 1,550 US dollars. And in terms of Australian dollars, there is a bit of price variation there. The cheapest price I've seen it listed for from a reputable dealer is $2,650 and the most expensive I've seen it advertised for is $2,860. Okay, let's see what's in the bag. All right, so this is a two foot by two foot light, but you've probably noticed the bag is not two foot by two foot. So the reason for that is because the light folds in half. So that's a, a point of difference from the other Pavo Slims. Now it does have some micro switches in here which stop the light from turning on if it's folded all the way up. The next thing I'll pull out is the controller. Now it is a little bit on the big side, but the controller does have the power supply built in. It has built in CRMX and it also has the battery plates built onto it. Now here's the point of difference between this and other two by two panel units. This will run off a single 14.4 V mount battery at 50% brightness. You can run it off a single 26 volt battery at 80% brightness. And the point of difference is if you're running this light off two batteries simultaneously, regardless of if they're 14.4 volt or 26 volt, the light will run at 100% brightness. The next thing I'll pull out of the kit is the plate mounting options. So you get a plate with a baby pin on it and you also get an articulated ball plate. Next thing I'll pull out is the softbox. So the softbox is different to the other Pavo Slims. So this is a softbox that Velcros onto the front. It doesn't have the pop out option. Also for the softbox, you get a very dense full diffuser. You get a grid cloth diffuser, which I'm gonna guess is a half grid cloth. You also get a control grid. Now, this control grid's okay. I'm not a massive fan of it, 
but it's not bad enough that I'd consider buying a third party option as a replacement. Also, you get your head lead, which is five meters long. You get your regional power cable, which has a Nutrix connector at the one end. And sadly, this is made of PVC. I really hate PVC cables. You probably know that if you watch my channel. You get a bag with the instruction manual. And the last thing in the kit here is the clamp, which connects your controller to your light stand. All right, let's do a bit of a walkthrough with this light. And at the same time, I'll go through pros and cons as they come up. All right, so the light folds in half for, for storing in a small bag. For me, this is a bit of a con compared to the other Pavo Slims because it does slow down the setup a little bit. But compared to lights with, with an exoskeleton, this is faster. So it really depends on how you want to look at it. For me, I personally think it's a con. Now to stop it from folding back up, what you do is add one of the plates. As Soon as your plate's in place, the light won't fold up. Now, in terms of the placement of the plate, you've got one in the center, which is the center of gravity, of course, and you've got one off to one side. So the idea of the one off to one side is to give you more options on your stands, okay? So in terms of the pin here, the pin has a nice sort of calamari cut to it. So it's got plenty of grip on it. So if you were using it off to one side, your stand would be able to support it. It wouldn't slip so much like uh, other lights can. But the issue I do have with this pin on this offset side is it doesn't give you much additional tilt if you're using it with a grip head. Now, if I was using the center position here, we definitely wouldn't get a lot of tilt. But with this lower position, we don't really get that much either. If you want to get a lot of tilt, you want to use the articulated mount. Let's do the same thing again, but this time with the articulated mount. And as you can see, this gives us a lot more tilt angle. So that's a bit of a pro for that. But here's my concern with this, or here's my negative with it. It's not a danger thing, but this light being made of a lot of aluminium has a fair bit of weight to it. So that supplies a bit too much torque onto the ball mounts here. So if this is in a situation where it's gonna get hit by wind or it's gonna vibrate or get bumped, I reckon it's gonna tilt. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so this doesn't really hold the light in place all that securely. Now the next possible negative is if you're gonna use this on a boom arm as a backlight or a far side key, something like that. So let's say we've got the stand behind the camera and we've got the boom arm coming this way. Well, you can access the ball mount at this point, but you don't get a lot of tilt because there is quite a distance, and I'm guessing that's for structural reasons, uh, between the edge of the light and this plate position. And if you're looking to use the pin, that goes nowhere near the height of the articulated arm. So that would be pretty much useless in that scenario. Now I've got this mounted on the center pin here and I'm gonna put the softbox on. So the softbox is a Velcro assemble. It is not a pop-out softbox like on the other Pavo Slims. Now, once you've got your softbox around the edges, you can put your diffusion on. Now, just bear in mind when you put your diffusion on that you're gonna to have to leave some space on the Velcro here for your control grid if you intend to use that. So this is definitely faster to assemble than a two x two with an exoskeleton, but it's definitely slower than the Pavo Slims with the pop-out softboxes. Now here's something to note. Let's say you're hoping to store this thing fully assembled to save a bit of setup time. So you're probably thinking that this is pretty wide and then with the pin on the back, it's not gonna store all that easily, but there is so much Velcro holding this softbox on. You've got Velcro on the edge, and Velcro on the back, that that Velcro actually does a good job of holding everything together without the center pin. So you could store this in your truck without a pin on the back, mostly assembled, ready to go, but it does take up a bit of space. All right, so let's take a look at our mounting possibilities with the back of the light here. So we've got our two plate positions and we've also got quarter 20 threads in the corners so you could mount articulated arms, things like that. In terms of mounting articulated arms like magic arms, this is quite heavy compared to other mats. So 
that might not work so well for you. Uh, another way you could rig this, for example, if you want it over the top of your set, you could use eye bolts with quarter 20s and put those in each end and suspend it that way. All right, let's uh, have a look at the crate. So for me, the crate is neither a pro nor a con. It's okay, it does an okay job. It doesn't do an awesome job. I wish it was a bit tighter. Let's uh, take a look at what it does. Now the light is sold with quite a few options for controlling our beam angle. So we've got our full diffusion here, we've got our grid cloth diffusion, we've got the native 60 degree beam on the LEDs, and we've got the crate which we can use in combination with the diffusers. So let's have a look at the differences. This is with the full diffusion, the grid cloth diffusion, no diffusion at all, the full diffusion plus the control grid, and the grid cloth diffusion plus the control grid. So now I'm going to summarize quickly what I think are the major pros and cons. Let's start off with the major pro. If you're looking for a two by two light to use as a key light, you're going to be using it on a light stand. You want something that can run off V-mount batteries and pack up into a small bag and give you a ton of firepower. This thing really heroes. To give you an idea of how bright it is, let's compare it to an Amaran F22. Compared to the Amaran F22C, the Pavo Slim 240C is 240% brighter with no diffusion attached. Now again, this is a bit of an unfair comparison because the Amaran F22 has flood LEDs and the Pavo Slim 240C has spot LEDs. With the grid cloth diffusion attached, the Pavo Slim 240C is 89% brighter and with the full diffusion attached, the Pavo Slim is still brighter, but only by 17%. Now let's get into what I think is really the big negative. All of this aluminium gives you really good build quality. The build quality is superior compared to other 2x2s without doubt, but it does add a lot of weight. So if like me, you're looking for something like this as a rigging light, that is a big negative. Now to give you some idea of how heavy this thing is, Let's compare it again to an F22. Now the Pavo Slim 240C head with its softbox and full diffusion attached comes in at literally double the weight of the Amaran F22C. And the Pavo Slim power supply and controller box comes in at half a kilogram heavier than the Amaran F22C's controller and power supply combination. Now let's take a look at the light with its native 60 degree beam angle with no diffusion attached. And for this test, I'm using a light stand so that you can gauge the multiple shadowing from all of the separate LED emitters. As you can see, the beam spread is definitely reduced to 60 degrees, but the payoff is the massive amount of firepower that we get. The characteristics seem to be the same regardless of the CCT dialed in. And this thing can definitely throw out a lot of colored light. On close inspection, you can definitely see the multiple shadowing, also known as shadow echo. However, if you're lighting up a large area from a distance, all of the LED emitters will merge into one and give you a singular 2x2 light source. Now let's take a look at the light with the grid cloth diffusion attached. Now this diffusion does a good job of removing the multiple shadows and giving us a bit more spread, but we have lost about 60% of our light output compared to having no diffusion at all. However, we still have a fair amount of firepower for a two x two soft light. The lighting characteristics seem to be the same regardless of the CCT or the color that you dial in. On close inspection, you can see the multiple shadowing has disappeared. And if you're lighting up a large area, this diffusion option gives you noticeably more spread. Now let's take a look with the full white diffusion. And this gives us a very even, very wide spread of light.
regardless of CCT or colour dialed in. At a distance of one metre from the wall and one metre from the light, our shadows are almost non-existent. As you can see from outside, it definitely has a very large even beam. Okay, so my closing thoughts. The 60CL, I absolutely love it. And this is how much. This one was sent to me for free for the review. And within a minute of setting it up and turning it on, I had ordered another three with my own money. So for me in the corporate sector, this makes a lot of sense. Quite often I'm shooting in an office environment and we need to rig into the ceiling or put on a boom arm, you know, a backlight or a kick, something like that. And a one by one is always edging the shot, always making it difficult for the camera operators. This does fill that little niche for me. It's way brighter than a tube light. And also I do a lot of car interior stuff. Um, on the cheap, we can't afford a, a, to, a, a rigging grip. This thing has so many rigging points, it does come in handy for that. All right, the 240, I think I'd be more excited about it if it packed up slimmer and had the pop-out box. Possibly I might buy a second one if that was the case. For me, I don't really use something like this as a key light. I tend to go with something bigger. I would use something like this for rigging and this thing is a bit on the heavy side. I'm not gonna sell it at the end of the review. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it in my small corporate van because for a two by two, this thing does output a lot of firepower. So it might be handy for that, but very hard to be excited about it because the rest of the Pavo Slim series is just perfect. The way it assembles quickly, the way you can get it deployed on set quickly. This thing takes that little bit more time. Anyway, that's my opinion. See you on the next episode of Gaffer and Gear. Take care.